Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The horrific death of the forgotten princess. King George III is remembered for being the King of the United Kingdom, who was afflicted severely with mental health conditions, and he was married to Charlotte Mecklenburg Strelitz. But despite this, the King had a huge number of children, and some of these would die before the King would. One of the most tragic and forgotten princesses of Britain was Amelia, the last child and sixth daughter of the King and Queen, and she would die at the age of 27 inside of Augusta Lodge in Windsor. Today she lies inside the Royal Vault in St George's Chapel in Windsor Castle, alongside scores of the royal family, many whom also have been forgotten about in history. Princess Amelia was born on the 7th of August 1783 at the Royal Lodge in Windsor, and she was the youngest of 15 children born to King George III and Queen Charlotte. She was the only one who was born at Windsor Castle, and she was the favourite of her father, the King, and he called her Emily. She was born following the early deaths of two of her brothers, Octavius and Alfred, and there was almost a gap of six years between her nearest sibling. She was 21 years younger than her oldest brother, George, and 17 years younger than her oldest sister, Charlotte. She was baptised in the Chapel Royal at St James's Palace by the Archbishop of Canterbury, and Amelia's birth signalled a huge lift for the country. She arrived after the death of Prince Octavius, but also shortly before the end of the war between the British and the Americans, meaning that the country saw her birth as something to celebrate. When she was just a month old, her sibling Charlotte wrote to her other brother, William, that our littlest sister is without exception one of the prettiest children I have ever seen and she was expected to be a beautiful and charming princess who one day would marry a powerful European monarch, establishing alliances for the British. But she was, as mentioned, a favourite of her father, and with this she knew her privilege as a member of the royal family. When she was three, the Queen's Keeper of the Robes stated about Amelia that she could be decorous and dignified when called upon to act a princess to any stranger, as if conscious of her high rank and the importance of condescendingly sustaining it. She spent the majority of her time with her sisters Mary and Sophia, despite the fact they were older, and they would live in different royal residences, but the three younger princesses did not get as much support and attention from their parents as they would look for matches for these siblings and of course they were much older. But the three princesses had much wilder behaviour than their elder sisters, and when they were told to sit for a portrait in 1785, there was a huge problem. The royal children could not sit still, and he could not get the dogs, bears, and other features in the artwork well, and with this the artist then never painted a royal portrait again. Amelia was educated in the same way as her elder siblings, but she was just five years old when her father suffered his first bout of madness. And because of his fragile mental state, Amelia would never then experience the close bond she had with her father, the king, ever again. And this must have been hard, as the king became rather distant. But before 1788, the king had told his daughters that he would take them to Europe to find husbands, and he said... I cannot deny that I have never wished to see any of them marry. I am happy in their company, and do not in the least want a separation. The king in the years suffered his madness, and further lapses occurred in 1801 and 1804, and this impacted the discussing of marriage between Amelia and other men. Charlotte worried about this, and she worried that pressuring her father would make him worse, and Amelia was overprotected to the point where she was restricted to meet a possible husband. But in 1798, Princess Amelia had developed a pain and affliction in the joint of her knee, and she was then sent to the town of Worthing by sea to recover. She wrote to her father and said, Certainly the vapour and warm sea bath air are of use, and therefore I hope that I shall soon be able to assure you that I am better. She recovered and went on holiday with her family to Weymouth, but she experienced symptoms of ill health throughout her life, and at the age of 15, she showed early symptoms of tuberculosis. 
She was then sent back to Weymouth there, years later for her health, and she stayed with other members of nobility, including the Honourable Charles Fitzroy, an equerry 21 years older than her, and was the son of Charles Fitzroy I, Baron Southampton. Amelia fell in love with him and wanted to marry him, but when her mother the Queen was told of this affair, she ignored it. There was a worry that this discretion would lead to the King going even more mad. And Amelia knew she could not legally marry this man. She even wanted to take Fitzroy's name, but she was clearly not well. In 1808, she had a huge attack of measles, and she became rather depressed and miserable. Yet again, Amelia was sent to Weymouth to recover, but her health only got slightly better, and she would rest up. She would take walks in the gardens, but she only slightly got better. In the August of 1810, Amelia took a huge downturn, her pains and suffering got worse, and she then, in the October of 1810, struck with erysipelas, and she was confined to bed. The king, hearing of Amelia's condition, ordered the physicians to him three or four times a day, so he could hear an update on the princess's condition. It was clear, though, that Amelia was dying. She lasted a few more days, but died on the 2nd of November, 1810, at 12pm. Amelia had made a mourning ring in her final days for her father, the king, and she placed inside this a lock of her hair under crystal-set diamonds. When George III received this, he burst into tears, and Amelia wanted all of her possessions to be left to Charles Fitzroy, the man she loved. She would be then buried in the royal vault in St George's Chapel, and it's believed that her elder brother wanted a death mask casting of her face. The death of Princess Amelia is said to have contributed to her father's declining mental state and the subsequent proclamation of the Regency Act, which made her brother, the later King George IV, regent in the absence of George III, her father. It was said that the king would cry in a wild, monotonous, delirious way, Oh, Emily, Princess Amelia, why won't you save your father? I hate all the physicians. He would have delusions and visions about Princess Amelia, and that she was in Hanover with a large family of her own. And George III began to believe this. It's believed that Amelia died from complications from tuberculosis, which would take her life years after she was first stricken with this. Princess Amelia was stated to have been the most turbulent and tempestuous of the princesses, but she was also said to have been intelligent and unselfish. But she was considered a beautiful princess with an auburn hair and bright ruby red lips. She was a favourite of the royal family, and as mentioned, she was adored by her father, and her death also had a profound effect on many of her siblings. One of them, the Duke of Sussex, could not sleep in a room that was not lit by wax candles after he attended her funeral but today she is considered a forgotten princess who lived a very tragic life. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.